Oh no, the poor fish. Oh. <clears throat> it's been a while. Now it is time for virtual animal friend guilt trips. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the swim. This is, you know, the newest update for Animal Crossing. It's a summer update. <clears throat> Includes swim and new items to collect, new innovative ways to tell me that I need to, you know, get my Happy Home Academy score up, new innovative ways to tell me that I'm a bad friend, and um, we can go swimming. I haven't played this in three weeks, maybe? Since uh, Scoot's birthday. Vinny, speaking of updates, do you have any plans to play the Hades update? Yeah, eventually, maybe. Um, it's not as substantial as an update as what will follow. Just depends, really, because Curse of the Moon 2 comes out this week, and I'll be streaming Hylix 2. So maybe. The ocean's been deemed safe for swimming. What's more, the water itself is clear and clean, which are the perfect conditions for underwater diving. For everyone's safety, we ask that you please use proper swimwear if you plan to enter the water. You can purchase a wetsuit at either the shop or Nook Shopping. I was gonna read that as Uncle Nook's for some reason. I don't know why my brain went to Uncle Nook. I can't wait to see folks out there diving, playing, and splashing the appropriate amount, of course. That's all for now. I hope you all enjoy the loveliest of lovely days. And sharks! Don't forget about sharks! It's like in, um, Sea of Thieves. It was like, Vinny, there's a shark in the water. I'm like, no. No, there's no shark. And then I turn around and there's a shark. What am I wearing? Holy fuck. This is three weeks of me just being in my house wearing this outfit. The animals are like... Where's Vinny? Who the fuck? Look at all this mail. Oh my lord. Scoot sent me a gift. Holy shit, I got a letter from Scoot! Thanks for remembering my special day. Your gift's really gonna power lift our friendship. Ha. Huh. Anyway, here's a little something in return. I hope you like it. Really like it. You're keeping yourself healthy these days, you gotta be strong if you wanna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, and to get strong you gotta recover well, that means watching plenty of TV and lounging around. This is like... everything that everyone's been doing... the past four months. Thank you for downloading the update, we'd like to give you a present to show our appreciation. Please keep an eye out for future updates as well. The cicadas cry in the morning light, awakening with the world. Awakening the world with their cacophonous symphony. Your mother cries out as well, lamenting her lack of sleep. Okay. Uh, we have wonderful new seasonal items in stock. Oh shit, Scoot! No, wait, Scoot, hang on! Wait, 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 I got some mail right here! Scoot, please don't, don't go away. I need to talk to you. Whoa, I think it worked. Hey, champ. I've been training my brain muscles for this thing called telepathy. It's for strong minds only. I started thinking really, really hard about you, and here you are. So, how you have you been? What you got in that bag? Um, what's going on, Zipsoom? 
What's the latest? Keeping it simple with a bathrobe, eh? I get it, Zipsu. You don't want to take any attention away from those sublime triceps. I like how Scoot has now, in this season of Animal Crossing, developed telepathy. Amu. You ready for the fishing tournament on Saturday, Zipzoom? I've been doing super secret weight training. Don't want my delts to give out holding a fishing rod. Shh, don't tell anyone. Check it out. These clothes were made with movement in mind. And that's exactly what I need. My clothes have to stand up to rigorous training, just like me, Zipzoom. Ah, you're just raring to go. What do you need? Trying to build better workout routines for everyone, but to do that, I need to get to know them better. Alright, so, what can we talk about? Oh, oh, I know. You read comics? Got any you'd recommend? Uh, Preacher? What's my favorite kind of comic? Um... Hen tails. There's stories about hens. So, hen tails. That's your thing? Yep. I don't think I've ever read hen tails before. Hey, as long as every issue's got world ending mega battle between two way ripped super beings, I'm in. Yeah, it's just about chickens. In fact, I think um, our, our town chicken really likes that. Um, Flick is in town. Hey, Vine. Long time no see. What are you up to? Me? I'm almost 7,000 push-ups a day. Bet you can't beat that. What's going on, Flexin? The footing in this plaza is perfect for doing sprint starts, but it's also so crowded that it's easy to sprint straight into someone. Hey there, it's been a while. Poor Island seems kind of empty without you, Smokeweed. Yeah, I know. Guilt trips, I know. Everything okay, Smokeweed? Our resident services work hard in the background to keep our islands running smoothly. Smoke weed! I think I might go drop off a carrot cake to thank them for all they do for us. Vine, have you heard? There's gonna be another fishing tourney this Saturday. Between now and then I need to research and brush up on all the latest fishing tips and tricks. Okay. Coverall with arm cover. I believe this was Scoot's outfit. Scoot gave this to me. Snorkel mask. Mom's plushie. <laughs> it's cute. Doot. Doot. You can customize the plush. Egbert is the name of our chicken. Speaking of, see, my telepathy's working too. Um, boy, I really let these weeds run rampant. What started as a desi uh, design choice has turned into a fucking, like, ordeal. Uh, at least Celia's happy with the amount of weeds. That's for damn sure. Alright, um, Egbert. Hey, it's BOOP! <laughs> Man, I haven't seen you in a while. Were you on vacation? <laughs> yeah, sure. Did you eat a bunch of yummy stuff while you were gone? Tell me all about it. Yes, I caught an evening cicada better than an odding 
Let's check it. Oh. Let me just touch this thing and hold it up to an imaginary camera. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Well, it's been a while. Metal can. Sure. I do like this, though. Ants. Seems like you're interested in an ant farm. 1400. How do I buy swim outfit? You have the swim. Horizontal striped wetsuit. Pointers about swimming. I don't have any pointers on your form, just the basics. You'll want to put on a suitable wetsuit, like this horizontal striped suit, and then um, press A from the beach or nearby rocks to hop into the water. Press A. If you see a shadow, press Y to dive. There's sea creatures. I can't wait to get an anglerfish. I already caught a football fish. Okay, before we swim... Hi, Scoot. It's me again. Oh, shit. Sorry, Scoot. Hey, we meet again. If you get stumped with a question, resident service is the place to get it answered, zip zoom. For instance, I asked Isabel if we could get a training gym. She said no. Okay, so that wasn't the answer I was after, but it was totally an answer. <laughs> Caught an earth-boring dung beetle. It's not boring at all. Yeah, roll that poop. Look at all this lost stuff. It's a lot of lost stuff. I remember when I had a, um, a mile streak. It was like a th almost 30 days of... ...logging in every day. Those were the days when all was new. And wonderful. All was... all was good. Someone said I've been playing for a month and I already feel that. Yeah, I mean a month is still a lot for this game. If you can manage to do all the things you wanted to do, you know, and then, like, the rest of it is just fucking around with your town. Trying to make your town better. Someone said, I've been playing every day since launch. Yeah, I don't- I don't have that... I don't have that kind of, um, drive for- for games. But I also know people who played World of Warcraft for, like, a year straight. We went from Yellow Bird to Owl. I missed, let's see, Cookie's birthday, Jock's birthday, Drake's birthday. I'm a bad friend.
Hey Drake, happy birthday. Ah, oh, where have you been the last three weeks? Everyone's been worried about where you were. Happy to see you again. You should say hi to everyone. Then we can all hang out, Quacko. Or then we can hang out. Sorry about the mess, but I ain't got time to clean today. Well, it's nice that your bug is still alive. I'm making me an orange dress. <laughs> One of the bugs on the floor whispered the DIY instructions. Wait, does that mean I already have it? Yeah. It's 4 p.m. It's time for your tree shaking. It's 6 p.m. Rather. Oh, fuck. Look at that. Martin Scorsese. Yes, I caught a walking leaf. It seems to be taking it in stride. I mean, I could submit these to the museum, but Flick is in town. We will definitely not eat them. It really is you for a second there. I didn't even recognize you. It's been that long. I was just thinking about you the other day, wondering what you were getting up to. I'm just glad to see you're still here on Hura Island, and I'm hyped to see what you do next. Looking for a rap session with old Jacques, huh? You know what? At this very moment, Flick is visiting Hora Island. I just said that. I heard he makes some really interesting fashion choices, so I'm gonna have to see for myself. So, what have you gotten yourself into? Hey, word on the street is that there's gonna be a fishing tourney. <laughs> Wait, no! I like to say, what's up, to them in the museum, you know? But I do want to win that trophy, and you've got to catch lots of fish to win. Going bugging. You know, bug hunting, bug catching, bug gathering, whatever you call it. That look in your eye. Like you're about to go on a bug catching frenzy. If I were a bug, I'd be backing slowly away. That's how good you are. I don't know, I mean, I've, I've caught... Oh, Celia's going off on that trumpet. Sax, rather. <laughs> not, not a trumpet. Our... Elder Statesman. Our oldest villager. Our original. The OG. Bungie. I mean, D.Va. Nah. Take me on. Um, what? Dance battle. Was I napping? Better question, was I drooling? You again, Bungie. Did you forget something last time? Except for the fishing tournament? No! Hey Vine, I'm liking your horizontal striped wetsuit. Real sporty. One of these days I should get in on the activewear thing. If you got any tips, I'm all ears, Bungie. You ever need someone to hear out your troubles or even a shoulder to cry on, just let me know. My life's been a wild ride. I'm sure I've learned something that can help you, Bungie. And people shit on D.Va. That can't possibly be a common blue bottle in your pocket, can it? Okay, so priceless ain't a word I'd use here, but I'd totally be willing to fork over 450 bells. I should... on D.Va. Do I? No. No, I don't shit on D.Va. Can't make it work. <clears throat> you must be pretty bored, huh, Bungie? Well, sure, I got time to kill. Monday nights used to be when my favorite TV show came on. That show was actually the first place I'd ever heard of those long sandwiches. What? 
you know, like hoagies, grinders, hero subs. I've never even heard of them before. How bizarre is that? Long sandwiches. We call them heroes up here in um, New York. I guess they're hoagies in Philly. And I don't know where the fuck they're grinders. Just, yep, just elongated sandwiches. It, all right, get this. Chat, get this. It's a sandwich, but long. I'm gonna be a millionaire. There's a couple places. I'm sure many of you have seen this, like, at, you know, functions, but, like, you know the sandwiches that are, like, three feet long? Or, like, you know, six feet long, human size? Yeah, I like those. But the problem is, you can't just get one of those for yourself. In an ideal- you could. In an ideal world, I would find, like, a random place. Just order one of those, like, three to six foot long sandwiches. Grab, like, four pieces for myself, and then just give them the rest and be like, ah, I'm good. It's like people that go to a party with, like, a cake, because they want to eat the cake, but they don't want the whole cake themselves, so they bring a whole cake to a party, and then, you know, Oh, yeah, well, uh, here's this butter pecan banana witch. It's like, oh, uh, thank you, this is great, and no one likes it. It's just an excuse for them to... ...get the thing that they like. There's this bizarre fruitcake... ...that I ate one time, that was just, like, fruit within, like, weird jello, and it was disgusting. Ugh! At my old job, the uh, the people used to bring in, you know, like, food. The big sandwiches, the cakes, you name it. And this one lady would bring in, over and over and over again, the disgusting fruitcake. They just like that cake? And at the end of the night, it would be like one or two slices were missing, and it would have to be tossed every time. That's really quite unfortunate. That's a tremendous waste of food. This room ended up kind of being a little frustrating. It seems like there's some room to move around, but there really isn't. In, you know, here in the nursery. I always really wanted, you know, like a bigger nursery, but... So we could adopt more gnomes, but sadly, there are many gnomes out in the world that will never have a home.
this fucking song. Now listen up, this is the jam room. You see? The ringles. I have to like time my button presses to the delay. It's fun. Not my tempo. Not my tempo. You're dragging. What else does he say in the movie? Um. Uh, God, in in a uh, whiplash. He says, not my tempo, you're dragging, and what's the other one? Rushing? I guess rushing and dragging. Usually we say behind the beat, or ahead of the beat. We say rushing and dragging. All right. Well, whatever you like. Yeah, this room ended up being something really special, as you can tell. Living room bathroom. You can take a shit while you watch TV. The smell wafts, and it's just you know it's real nice. What the fuck am I gonna do with this ant farm? It's nice to revisit some of the, um, the rooms after I haven't seen them for a long time. It was board on the cork board. table. You know, like a non-scummy table. It's too big. I'll do for now. I need a better, like, table here and here, maybe, at some point. I might just not do it, because, you know, I'll forget about it. Also, Art of the Score. 
started with Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I listened to that episode. It's good. What a great soundtrack. You know, these movies with John Williams scoring are just elevated by his soundtracks so fucking much. It's not like Raiders needed the, the help by any means. One of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. But... When you take the soundtrack on its own and really analyze all the individual pieces, it's so good. And I, I also have a deeper appreciation for the, um... The Grail theme. Oh, not the Grail theme, the Ark of the Covenant theme. And I'm sure... Like a lot of you know this, if you've watched these movies, maybe you've you've heard them, maybe you know what I'm talking about, but John Williams has reused um, a specific interval in a bunch of his songs, like the love theme, like Princess Leia's theme is da 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 da. All right, in Indiana Jones, it's da da. Da, da, da. What is it? Can you can you dude it out in the chat, please? If anyone knows it. Da 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 da. da. All right, and then Han Solo and the princess from Empire Strikes Back is da 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 da. So he does the same da da every time. That is his way of depicting romance, I guess. John Williams stealing from himself the same two notes. Three years apart. Three or four years apart. Damn, John Williams. I think Hanfrey wants to move. Or is he drunk? I made up my mind, I'm leaving for a new island vine. Did I shock you? I mean, I just decided here. On the spot, I want to see how I do somewhere new. Hemming and hawing about this stuff does no good. Gotta strike while the iron's hot, I reckon. Um... Check the chat for a poll. In three, two, one, go. Wow, chat wants him out of here. Jesus, chat. I was leaning towards letting him go, to get a new villager, but he will be missed. If you love something, set it free. I'll be cheering you on. That's the spirit. Hope you know what big help you've been to me around here, Vine. When I'm gone, it'll be up to you to look after all these fine folk. Counting on you, Snort. Alright, well, now we just need another grumpy villager. There's also a possible, um, data mine in relation to... Um, Dream Towns. Oh, I see how this works. Whoa, this is- I got a sea slug. Kind of salty about that. Is 
So I don't know. I mean, it seems kind of likely that we're going to get Dream Towns. I don't see why we wouldn't. A oh, slog juice. But I'd love, I'd love that. That was a really great way to see people's fucked up weird towns without having to actually go there. You know, like enter a friend code and shit. I got a sea pineapple. Your move, sea pizzas. Spongebob. What is Dream Towns? In New Leaf, there was... What you would do is, you would, you would enter a code, but you just wouldn't have to interact with anyone. It would be their town offline, basically, so they could save a version of their... People could save a version of their town and upload it to the Dream Town, and you could just visit. And they wouldn't be there online with you, but you could just check out their town. It was really cool. I mean, I checked out dozens of towns, including some really weird glitched ones. And, like, horror towns. People got really fucking creative with New Leaf. And I think they could get even more creative with this because of the terraforming. So I want to see what kind of weird horror and murder mysteries people could come up with in Animal Crossing. But Dream Towns... It's just an easier way to visit people's stuff, that's it. Nope. Whoa, this is... I got an octopus. I can give it four hugs at once. I'd like to be... ...under the sea. That's all I'm legally allowed to sing. Unless I keep it legally distinct. In a squid's little garden. In the shade. Whoa, this is a spotted garden eel. Was it unspotted before I saw it? Yeah, let me just put that in my non-pocket. Vinny, open your cell phone. I, I can open my cell phone. Whoa, this is sea grapes. I can't let these go sour. Weird Final Fantasy 7 dream last night. I didn't write it down, so the details kind of escaped me, but Mr. Frank was there. <laughs> I got a moon jellyfish now to find a sun peanut butter fish. Yeah, Mr. Frank is a funnier character than we've ever had. Oh, this is a sea urchin. I wasn't even urchin for it. What did he look like in your dream? He- it's just a fuzzy naked dude. Like, I don't remember. I think it was some kind of attack on a Midgar reactor, but... Barrett was there, Cloud was there, and Mr. Frank was there. So I had a dream about the stupid story that I created last night. Or that the AI and myself created last night. I like that after I wrote Midgar a couple times, the AI creator, like, said Shinra, so it knew exactly what was happening, and then it even, like, it knew that I was Cloud. Whoa, this is Acorn Barnacle. Will it grow into an Oak Barnacle?
Yeah, there was no, like, hogs flapping in the wind or anything like that. It was, like, just fuzzy figures and, like, a bunch of stuff that happened. You know when you have a dream and just a bunch of random actions happen? And you have, like, an overview of what happened when you wake up, but you don't remember specific actions? That was that. I woke up knowing that I had had a weird dream about Cloud Barrett and Mr. Frank, but that was it. And this is also, like, me not writing down my dreams anymore means that I don't remember them as much. When I have the dream notebook, I've been valuing my sleep a little bit more, so I haven't been waking up to write my dreams down. So... Now I'm losing the ability to remember them as well. So, if you want to remember your dreams, keep a consistent dream journal. It'll help. I got a whelk. Happy snails to you. Frank Welker. Mr. Frank Welker. Vinny Mesh A underwater. Oh, I see. I see how that works. Okay. Whoa, this is a sea anemone. The enemy of my anemone is my afrenemone. Oh my god. All right, Anakin. How do you get the mermaid stuff, chat? Like, the underwater weird, like, cool stuff. Do you have to find, like, damaged Gulliver? Anemone. Anem anemone. Anem anemone? Anemone? Scallops? Find a scallop. This game now has a very specific place in my mind. I'm gonna have, like, from years from now, I'm gonna have very specific and strong memories of this game. Considering I streamed it, like, every day during quarantine. So, I was, as we all were, pretty much stuck inside at the beginning of quarantine. Just playing Animal Crossing. But I'm gonna remember all the weird, dopey shit. Years ago... Or, sorry, years from now. I'm gonna remember this game very fondly. But also have some weird... You know... It's gonna be a little weird, too. Remembering the pandemic. You know, if we manage to ever get out of it. Also, I say used to, because I've been getting out a lot lately, the weather's been nice. And, you know, some places are open, I still go to places to pick up food. Um, I, you know, the studio was a thing I was doing for a while, I'm still doing it, but now the album's done, so... Less so. Got a scallop, it ought to be savored. So, yeah, it's- ooh, wait, 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 where'd you go? Who is it? Pascal! Hey man, about that scallop of yours, can I have it? Sure. Whoa, thanks for your generosity, man. Since you were cool about the scallop, I left you a cool recipe in return. The pearls you need for that recipe are rare, but you can sometimes find them on the ocean floor. Keep my eyes open for them, too. Might even trade you for a scallop if I find one. Forget give and take. This is called give and give. That's how we all win, you dig? Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to lay some truth on you, the deep kind. Feel this. Harv and Pascal should hang out. Downward-facing dog. Might be a yoga pose, man, but upward-facing otter is a way of life. Wrap your noodle around that. Yep, today's a good day. I, I love him.
Yeah, so let me just reiterate. Yeah, I'm being careful when I go out, too. Like, I don't really, like... I've been avoiding... Like, crowded areas and stuff like that. It's not that I'm, like... You know, going out indiscriminately. I'm still being very, very careful. It just feels a little bit better now because the weather's nice and I can go to a park and I can relax outside for a while. So, that's been nice. That's been good for my, my sanity. To, uh, even go out a little bit. Today, though, it was raining like a motherfucker. Like the sky just opened up. Time to return to shore. Well, we're about to get a massive lesson, chat. We're about to learn so much shit. Channel. I have so many of these. Creatures and other marine wonders can be found off the shores of our very own Hoor Island or so I heard tell. Anywho, it is exciting stuff. Now, I do not know the precise whereabouts of said oceanic discoveries, but if you, any happen to find their way into your possession, I would be most eager to see them. Ah, Gordon, good to see you. I found a sea creature. Is that so? What manner of marine life might it be? My pin feathers are a prickle in anticipation. Oof, this is a sea slug. Would you entrust this marvelous marine find to me? I shall gladly take you up on your offer. Might I interest you in some fascinating facts? Imagine, if you will, a land slug, but one dressed in frilly attire full of bold colors, stripes, and spots. That is the sea slug, a gastropod that looks ready to walk the red carpet or perform beneath the big top. But these clowns are no laughing matter. Their garish colors and wild patterns warn predators to steer clear of their stinging, toxic taste. That is how you dress for success, as they say. And I had that in my hand. Slug in the hand that you... This is a broad category that includes discoveries that are not technically creatures, per se, but go see what the sea has to offer. Your enthusiastic and phil philanthropic participation is all I ask. Sea grapes are a marine algae that looks much like their landlocked namesake. It is their green pearl-like orbs that cluster tightly along underwater vines. And sea grapes, like regular grapes, are a popular snack food, too, albeit of the saltier variety. Fans of the briny delicacy enjoy the way the shiny pearls pop when chewed. It makes one wonder whether sea grape juice might have some appeal. Twould leave the drinker with sour grapes, I suppose. 
they're someone had them in chat you've had sea grapes that sounds i don't really eat seafood uh that sounds a little nasty to me but is it does algae taste good sphinx said they're pretty good in the right dish they are really good doesn't taste great. It's like caviar. Do you like salt? <laughs> yeah, on other things. Seaweed salad is real good. I've had that. Wonderful. Okay. Um, try not to gawk as you look upon the sea pineapple. Its peculiar look is simply one of nature's many jokes. Though it may look like a half-rotten hunk of fruit, the sea, the sea pineapple is no plant, shellfish, or even sea slug. It's a tunicate. What? What? A fancy name for a shallow water filter feeder with a taste for plankton. It should be noted that the sea pineapple looks like a tadpole when it's young and can still swim about. Alas, its youthful cuteness wears off once it attaches itself for good to a rock. I just heard Alexa from my other Are you kidding me? Alexa, turn off! I plugged it back in. And something activated. Did I say anything that sounded like Alexa? I guess I said alas. Oh my god. But let's put insults aside. Sea pineapples are full of water, you see. And I fear we're asking for a squirt in the eye. And there you have it. I was watching YouTube on the, on the Echo thing. And um, I, I left it plugged in. I should really unplug that again. Did, I, I wasn't even paying attention. Did it say a squirt of saltiness or something? I wonder how squirt's doing. Wonderful. Okay, so Medusa herself would be most impressed by the sea anemone. This pretty predator loves to wave its colorful, flowing locks about, but those gorgeous tresses are, in fact, deadly tentacles surrounding a hungry mouth. Triggered by the slightest touch, these tentacles harpoon victims with a neurotoxin. A neurotoxin, Colonel. The sea enemy then pull, the, the anemone pulls the helpless, help, hapless prey into its mouth for a spot of lunch. I say, let this be a lesson. Never, ever make an enemy out of an enemy. And there you have it. A whelk. Whelks are sea snails that migrate from deep water to shallow water when the weather changes. Avid carnivore carnivores. <laughs> they feed on worms, crustaceans, and mollusks. In fact, these wily snails have been known to use their shells, their own shells, to pry open the shells of their victims. They then use a rough tongue-like organ with thousands of tiny teeth to lick their victims' shells clean! Ugh, you might want to put that image out of your mind when it's your turn to dine. It's absolutely disgusting. I hate it. Okay, you're going to suck this shell clean! Do not mistake this acorn barnacle for a relative of the clam. Tut tut, mollusks, they are not. Barnacles are cousins to crabs and lobsters, you see. Though the family resemblance is hard to spot. Acorn barnacles may also seem to live a stationary life, what with being attached to rocks and such. Truth be told, baby barnacles are avid travelers, drifting shellless about the sea before settling down. Once they find a good rock to affix themselves to, they float free no more, which begs the question, do adult acorn barnacles ever look out across the open sea and long for youthful adventure once more? Still going, chat. We've got we've got lots more. 
Sorry, we're learning. We're we're learning everything. Ah, the moon jellyfish. What's not to love about this pretty floating flower of the sea? Well, I suppose its tentacles do give a sting when touched. It's only a mild thing to the likes of us. Other creatures may not be so fond of this tent translucent beauty. Though, who can blame them, really? Moon jellyfish have stinging cells called... Cyanite... Snido... Snido... Snidocytes that kill fish and other small critters that float by. Snidocytes? Nidocytes. The sea is silent. Oh, it's a necessary sea, then. They use their oral arms <laughs> to pull these morsels into their mouths and stomachs. There's that word again, morsel. Indeed, one need but observe the moon jellyfish to see how brutal and beautiful nature can be, and there you have it. Every so often, my capture card, like now that I've figured out the audio, every so often it kind of dips. Like you'll hear the pitch kind of go low for like a second. It happens very rarely, but it, it's better than hearing a click. Someone in chat says people still play this game. You can play this game for as long as you want. Um, but if you saw the title, chat member, there's a new update. It says new update in the title, but but you you knew what you were doing, chat member. I see you. Speaking of sea and urchins, this is undoubtedly a sea urchin. Ah, the sea urchin, the unabashed goth of the ocean floor. Indeed, with a mane, its mane of dark-hued spikes, it looks for all the world as if it might be... Oh, it might front a punk rock band. Perhaps its more demure relatives, the sea cucumber and the sea star, disapprove of its outlandish looks. It would certainly explain why sea stars gobble up sea urchins every chance they get. But worry not for our spiky friend, its venomous spines are an effective deterrent to many a predator. And then there are its sticky tube feet, which it uses to maneuver out of harm's way. Tube feet, I say! What will this salty rebel think of next? What? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Seaweed? Let it be known that seaweed is a misnomer of the highest order. That is, it is not a noxious weed so much as it is a mar marine algae most beneficial to life on land and sea. Seaweed, you see, provides essential habitat and food for all manner of marine creatures. And it creates a great deal of oxygen we land lovers love to breathe, too. And yet, I can't help but shudder when the slimy stuff touches my toes during a swim. I remember those days when I used to swim in the ocean. I haven't swam in the ocean in... Jesus. Two decades? Almost? Fuck. Yeah, I've lived two decades and still have memories. But... Yeah, it's been a long fucking time since I swam in an ocean. Hootie hoo, this must be a spotted garden eel. But yeah, I, I used to love that. I just hated feeling weird slimy things on my feet. The spotted garden eel is a small eel-shaped fish that loves to burrow in the sandy ocean floor. These silly things are known for popping their heads out of the sand to nibble on plankton drifting by. Some say this makes them look like plants sprouting in a garden. Hence, the name spotted garden eel. But I think they look more like prairie dogs peeking out of a desert hidey holes. That's Desert P's new name. Uh, desert hidey hole. Prairie eels have a lovely ring, don't you think? Oh yeah, make no mistake, the entire stream is Owl. Welcome to Blather's stream. Oops, all Blathers. 
With its eight limbs, three hearts, and surprisingly big brain, the o octop octopus? Octopus is quite the wonder. It also is an escape artist like no other. You see, the octopus has specialized skin cells that can change color and texture with lightning speed. Thus, it can look for all the world like a patch of seabed one minute and a pile of rocks the next. But the deception doesn't stop there. What, what? When attacked by a predator, the octopus releases a cloud of ink and poof makes its escape. Let's call the octopus what it is, shall we? The ninja of the deep. Decoy octopus from Metal Gear Solid, yeah? I, yeah, I guess ninja makes sense for an octopus. Someone's gonna make a game. Like octopus ninja. It's gonna be like undersea stealth adventures with an octopus. That could be kind of cool. The uh, saw stag got its name from the shape of its pincers. That that is, its pincers look like jagged saws. I tell you, the biggest, the bigger the beetle, the more saw-like teeth its giant jaws have. I say the saw stag seems more at home in a horror film than in nature. I've terrified myself just thinking about it. Any hoot, my sincerest thanks for your donation. And though bugs are the bane of my existence, rest assured the wretched thing will get the best of care here. Almost done with blathers. Evening Cicada. The Evening Cicada certainly knows how to ruin a quiet moment. As the sun sets, it strikes up a sad song so sonorous, one can't hear one's own thoughts. I'd feel sorry for its melancholy moods if it weren't so very vocal about how it feels. Uh, please pipe down. Any hoot, my sincerest thanks. What a fraud. What a phony. The walking leaf is, in fact, the very embodiment of a lie. This master mimic looks like a tree leaf all the way down to the tiniest details. In fact, this bug has been known to sway to and fro as it walks, just so it looks like a leaf blown by the wind. And the fakery works! These insects look so much like leaves that even leaf-eating insects nibble on them. Nibelheim. Lying liars, indeed. How long has Blathers been going? Probably about 15 minutes now. And I have to be the vessel for which Blathers can communicate vocally. You know, Blathers has no real vocal cords, aside from these... So I have to be the vessel. Earth-boring dung beetles are considered quite handsome by some, thanks to their metallic luster. In fact, some even think them to be good omens and bringers of favorable fortune. But I must protest. These field-ravaging pests love to burrow under piles of dung and lay their eggs. They raise their young under dung! Need I say more? Ick, I think not. I feel learned. And my brain grew three sizes that day. Hey Vine, long time no see, been busy? I've been so bored lately that I took up making playlists for an afternoon. It was pretty- I was pretty good. Browsing the cute accessories and sparkly knickknacks gets me so hyped. It's like someday I'll be on stage singing, dancing, and wearing sparkly stuff. This makes me feel so imminently famous, so way down deep inside, you know. Cool vocal fry you got there, Arfur. Do you want to see pineapple? <laughs> Do 
Looks fresh caught, even. I've been wanting to amp up the chill vibe in my room, so it's like... ...the perfect addition. Thanks, Arfur. I feel kind of bad being the only one getting stuff. Here, take a gillet and shirt. Gillet? I'm learning how to pronounce a million words from this game. Gilet. I've learned more from Animal Crossing than I have college. Look like I'm about to... Like, put on a, sh a rock show. Playing Steely Dan covers. Everything itches. I've been taking a bath. I even thought about using soap. Yowie zowie. Flea. I kicked the fleas out because they never paid rent. Thanks. <laughs> the last remnant of the. Of, of what's his name? Donkey Kong. How's it going with those bugs? Practice makes perfect, so swing that net at everything, including me. I have a gift for you. Huh? Do I get something? Yep. Whoa, is this really a flea? Did you catch it yourself? Thanks, I can't wait to introduce her to the other bugs in my house. Wait a minute, weren't they not paying rent? I thought the flea was... Ah, uh, it's... whatever. It's a nice blue shell. If you collect 20 of those blue shells, you get a new sword. Vinny, you could play Hylix 2 someday, if you're interested. Okay. I, I will. Hylix 3 isn't out yet. What, you want me to play that instead? I'll get in touch with Mason Lindroth and I'll be like, hey dude, can you can you rush development of Hylix 3? Also, I don't know if I've ever said this, but Mason Lindroth has a cool fucking name. I don't know if that's a stage name or what, but I love it. Okay, so I have another scallop. When does Pascal show up? Tomorrow? Oh, so every... Okay, so you have to get a scallop every day. Once per day. And I suppose... Eventually... 
you can get all the recipes from him. I could donate it. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, so y they're not like currency then. You have, you do have to get a new one every day. Well, the stuff does look cool. I can't deny that some of the mermaid stuff looks awesome, but I'm just not going to be playing every day. Someone said, I like the pirate stuff better. Is the pirate stuff from Gulliver? Like, new, new Gulliver? How um, often do you get new Gulliver? So what, it would take me like three years to get all the pirate stuff, right? The pirate wall looks like DKC2 Gangplank Galleon Captain's Room. It's cool. Every visitor appears every other week at least. They fixed NPC stuff to a certain extent. Okay, because there were certain NPCs that I only saw, like, once or twice. And it took months to see them again, if that. I saw red one time. Uh, twice, twice. Wait, the new NPC isn't Gulliver. It's a new NPC called Gulliver. Jesus. Wasn't there a new Nintendo announcement that had new in it? What, what was that? It was like new something. It was recent. Pokemon Snap, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really talk about Pokemon Snap. I don't really have much to say about it, except I never owned it, but I enjoyed it. My friend had it, played it. We played a, a good chunk of it together, and I thought it was really cool. So, I'll probably check out the new one, if it's any good. I just didn't expect it to go back to the, the new naming format. Speaking of new games, um, well, well, first we'll start with old game. Noclip released a 40-minute little documentary about Command & Conquer Remastered. And it made me love that game even more. A mantis shrimp? Put it down. Put it down! So yeah, it's it's really good. I watched the no clip documentary on uh, Outer Wilds too, but uh, yeah, the Command & Conquer one, it shows like how people really cared about this project and, you know, the people behind it, but also how the community was very involved in the de development of the game. 
which made me appreciate it even more because they were consulting with some of the members of the community like almost every day for Command & Conquer Remastered. And it shows, too. Also talks about the footage that they found. Frank Klepacki talks about what music he had to redo, what music he was able to remaster, how he did the sound effects. And it's just fascinating. Really good documentary. So, I had this idea because they said at the end of the documentary that the doors are now a little open. Like EA, in a weird twist of fate, is very enthusiastic now about more possible Command & Conquer. And, um... EA, as we all know, is a supervillain sometimes. Most of the time, lately. But, they did a really good job with this. They let them just do whatever they wanted. And then, no microtransactions, just 20 bucks. Just go for it, Petroglyph. Have fun. Make a game for the fans. And they did that. And it shows. It's really one of the bright spots of the remakes and remasters. And, uh, what would be cool is if EA gave Petroglyph a nice budget and said, here's what you're gonna do. Do Command & Conquer 2. Now, Tiberian Sun, I never played. I've, I know people like it, but I also know that it was a little divisive. It would be kinda cool, for, for me, this is what I'd want. Maybe some people don't want this, but I would love a version of Command & Conquer to be like, you know what they're doing with like certain movies where they just disregard the previous entries and just carry on? I wouldn't mind seeing where they would go with Command & Conquer from the first one. From here. So not a retcon, maybe like an alternate parallel dimension kind of thing involving weird nod technology. And just keep it kind of simple. More back to basics Command & Conquer but with more modern improvements. I wouldn't mind seeing that. And what's his name? Kane could still play the part very easily, so... It could be uh, 2D, it could be 3D, I really don't care. Just as long as we get something new that isn't, like, overly bogged down in all the crazy stuff that came after Command & Conquer 1, which I think is cool stuff, I finally researched the lore, but then you also have Command & Conquer 4 in there, and then some things just stop making sense. Like David Byrne in a big suit. So I think, um, if they're gonna do more Command & Conquer, just keep it simple. And considering the success of the remaster, just go from there and see if people respond to it. And maybe try to bring back some fans to the RTS genre. Because, um, it could use it. EA Respawn did well with Jedi Fallen Order 2, best Star Wars game in a decade. You know, I've said this about that game, I liked it a lot, I really enjoyed it, in fact. If they do a sequel to it, it could be even better, because they need to fix a lot of shit and work out some of the pacing stuff, but I still thought the game was, like, really cool. I do think it was probably one of the best Star Wars games we, we've gotten in a decade, because we haven't gotten any Star Wars games in a decade. <laughs> so the fact that they did that, it was purely single-player, it was good, it didn't have any weird microtransactions, that improved its reputation tenfold for a lot of people, myself included. I'm actually really eager to see what they're doing with the Starfighter game. It looks like a good spiritual successor to Rogue Squadron. And again, it's like got a good single player. It appears that they're doing it right. And they're not gonna, you know, go for like the full EA treatment. So, I think maybe the backlash that they received for years in becoming worst company of the year you know, several times in a row, maybe it worked. Maybe some of the fucking executives at EA... Mental. MENTAL! Someone said it didn't help. Listen, I too like to be cynical, but... I really... do see some better stuff happening 
like I said, Command and Conquer and Star Wars. That's a first step. So let's, um, let's see what happens. Let's see if they continue this, or if they go back to their scummy ways. Someone said, now it's Blizzard's turn. Now it's Activision Blizzard's turn, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, no, Blizzard deserves the blame, too. Sure they do, but I don't know the full story, so... I would just like to see anything... Diablo 4? I'm cautiously... optimistic for, on some level, because they've been releasing updates. But, my faith in Blizzard has become so tainted... that part of me is just writing it off. I mean, that game might not release for another three years anyway, but... Someone in chat said Diablo 2 Remaster is going to be announced this August. That would be fine. Um, considering how they handled Warcraft 3, I have, again, no faith. If that gets announced, though, and they just do what they did with Command & Conquer, which obviously different company, but... Just keep it as it was. Update the visuals. Make the, um, online experience even smoother. Update it for modern PCs. That's it. That's all you need to do. Just keep it simple. Having streamed and played Diablo 2 last year, again, it still holds up. It's still a great game. It still runs. Is that the, uh, the, the deep, um, ostrich? What is she? Really not relevant to this discussion, but do you feel this game has enough content? Yeah, I've been I've been seeing that a lot. I will defend this game in the sense that I've gotten over a hundred hours out of it. And I was eager to boot it up every day. New Leaf to me was more uh, of a complete package. So I'm waiting for more updates from this game. If this game in a year from now has as much or more than New Leaf, that would be cool. But at the moment, I'm gonna say, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. Terraforming alone is great. But this isn't gonna win over non-Animal Crossing fans. If you don't like the concept of Animal Crossing, you're not gonna find the content that you want. But yeah, I do think this game has a lot of stuff. Someone in chat said, I have hundreds of hours, but there's not enough content. Wow. I, yeah, I've been seeing that. I'm not sure what people really... Like, what else do you want from Animal Crossing? Like, aside from some of the New Leaf stuff that I really want, like Dream Towns. Like, I'm not really sure... Like, minigames? What else? Stop abusing the stonk market? Well, I mean, that's what it's there for. Maybe farming? More dialogue. Battle Royale. <laughs> Better online. I always thought that a, um... Animal Crossing persistent world could be cool. Like, you know, a mode where you can go into one world. Like, you have your town, and then there's like a big community town that, like, you know, 20 people live in and can all update. Something like that. I thought that would be a good future 
of Animal Crossing kind of thing. I almost half expected it for this one, but they kept it very traditional. While most members of its family are known for staying put, the scallop is a nimble fellow indeed. When a hungry sea star approaches, the scallop can swim away by clap-clapping its shells together. How does a scallop know when a predator approaches, you ask? Why, it has 200 eyes to see with. It makes one wonder what else the scallop sees with all those eyes. I fear it sees into my very soul. Okay, so... Manta Shrimp. Think carefully before you mock the Manta Shrimp for its diminutive size. I warn you, it's itching for a fight. A pugilist. See, I learned that word last night. Through and through, this brightly hued fellow packs a punch unparalleled on land or sea. Not only are its forelimbs shaped like clubs and scythes, its arms are naturally spring-loaded, too. Thus, the mantis shrimp's high speed blows crack open crab. High speed blows crack open crab and oyster shells with ease. And should you grab it with your hands, you might discover why it's called the thumb splitter, too. I mean, my character grabbed it with his hands. Well, sorry, his, his orbs. If you put a mantis shrimp out of its tank and interact with it, it'll crack the glass. It's cool. It's undoubtedly a muscle. Now, did you know the muscle has a beard? Ooh, it's true. Well, partially true anyway. Muscles have a special gland that secretes a thing called byssus or bisal thread. They use these tough beard-like fibers to anchor themselves to rocks and keep themselves in place. So you see the muscle's beard is functional rather than merely stylish. Then again, perhaps all beards should be this way. Oh yes, I like to sometimes grab food with my beard. Sylvester Abalone. My feathers, but the Abalone is the most deceptive sea snail. What, what? After seeing its dull brown shell from the outside, one would think it is quite plain. But take a gander inside, and you'll see that the Abalone's home is a shimmering beauty to behold. The inner layer of the shell is made of nacre, or mother of pearl, and, who, what a dazzling iridescent hue. Let this be a lesson. You mustn't judge a sea snail by the outside of its shell. Judge it by the inside of its shell instead. And there you have it. Someone said, Vinny, help. I hear stand by REM every time you talk to someone. That's because it is stand by REM every time I talk to someone. This is undoubtedly a sea star. Okay, so the sea star may appear to have five feet, but those are, in fact, its arms. And though five-armed sea stars are most common, there are species with 20 or even 40 arms out there. But the fascinating appendage facts do not end there, what what. You see, upon each sea star's arm sprout ma many dozen- uh, whoa, whoa. Upon each sea star's arm sprout many dozens of tiny feet. Yes, feet! They use these suction-cupped feet, just- not just to move about, but to, uh, grab hold of dinner guests as well. Finally, it should be noted that when a sea star loses an arm, it can grow back. More impressively yet, a severed sea star arm can sometimes grow an entire sea star body back. God, imagine if, like, a human arm could grow a human. And it would just be like, like, what if... Like, I chopped my arm off and it grew a version of me. But it was just slightly off. You know, like, it wasn't quite me, but it looked a little bit like me, like this. You know? That would be real fucking weird.
Real weird. The tiger prawn is a hardy crustacean found in many places around the world. Named for the stripes on its exoskeleton. It molts out of this shell as it grows in size. If only I could acquire a larger home with such ease. But do you know what I find even more fascinating? The tiger prawn's legs. It has five pairs of swimming legs. Five pairs of walking legs and three pairs of limbs it eats with. How, might I ask, does it not trip over its own 26 feet? And there you have it. Someone said, it's cool to finally catch you live. I was wondering if you're interested in this game I found called Hylix 2. Thanks for the stream, Vine Sauce. That's from a chat member who is at every one of my streams, by the way. I like that chat member. That was good. I enjoyed that. That was a good bit. Oh, look at that. They're littering the, uh, the tank here. There's the pineapple. There's the octopus. So yeah, no, I definitely understand people's complaints about the lack of content, if you want to call it lack of content. I just feel like there's a lot of stuff. The quality of life stuff in this game is nice, too. But I still feel like, um... Just to go back to it for a second, do you remember that video that people made, the Quality of Life Direct? And I talked about it a couple times. I still feel like any of that stuff would improve the game further. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great game. It's got the high level of polish and, you know, quality. But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's more stuff that could have been in this game. Luckily, we're getting pretty decent updates. Like, we had the red update, we've got the swimming update, the holidays are mostly kind of lame, actually, but some of them are cool. And there's another big summer update on the way soon. So, you know, like I said, yeah, it, there's at least support for this game, and I feel like we're going to see support for it for a while, considering New Leaf got a giant update, like, three years after it came out or so. So, yeah. I love it. I enjoyed my time with it. I'm happy to come back to it and stream it. It's gorgeous. I will say that this game is really, really pretty. And I like looking at it, especially this. This is like one of my favorite parts of the game, actually. But yeah, Dream Towns, more mini games, just some quality of life stuff here and there. A little bit, uh, the NPCs appearing once a week would be nice. I know they fixed that, but stuff like that. A common town was something I really liked in New Leaf and City Folk. So, and of course, Villager Dialogue. That is the thing I've complained about the most. It gets very, very repetitive very fast. But it's still a very high quality Animal Crossing game. Is it the best Animal Crossing game ever made? I think in some ways it is. The terraforming you know, raises the argument, the visuals, the, the sheer amount of things you can catch and put in the museum. Um, there's some- the furniture is really great, it looks amazing, you can put it outside. The customization is great, but I still think people are gonna prefer New Leaf. But, yeah, the series I think needs to evolve a little further. I don't know what that could be. I mean, my idea of having a more persistent online world, that was my just initial, like, oh. That's my boilerplate idea of where Animal Crossing can go. I don't know if everyone wants something like that, but it's certainly something. Uh, a sword, so you can go into caves and fight monsters. That would be cool. Wait, that's just Rune Factory. That's just Stardew Valley. There's also rumored uh, farming coming to the game based on potential data mining. Again, rumor. Big rumor, grain of salt, I don't know how true that is, but you might... You might believe it, you might not. I think that would be cool. Farming could be nice. Cooking could be cool too. Someone else said there's cooking that was in... Hope that's not a spoiler, but possibly cooking. 
So stuff like that goes a long way to add more things to do in the game. And I'd be down for it. One thing I was really hoping for is just more villager interactions. More things to do for them. Little quests. Little plot lines. Maybe like, you know, trying to figure stuff out for them. You know, talking to one villager, then the, the next. Excuse me, then finding an item. Anything, really. But... That said... My 100 or so hours um, that I got out of this game have been have been good and it helped me get through quarantine as it did many people and I'm very grateful that it came out when it did. That said, I'm totally burnt out on it unless updates arrive, which is what I'm doing now. Someone said quarantine's not over yet. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. It feels a little, like I said, it just feels better because I'm going out more and enjoying the weather more. And some more things are open. And I'm able to to now go to the studio and work on music. Socially distant studio music working, of course. But that's been helpful for my mood. So it feels a little bit better than it did at least. But to those in, like, Florida, Texas, and California, just be careful and, you know, good luck out there. I'm still worried about more reopenings. It's more uh, bars. You know, I'm... I'm just seeing what I observe, or I'm just saying, rather, what I see around me. But it seems like the bars are where it's getting real, but like, you know... If those open... Some nice penis wasps. If those open, that's, that's what I fear. Someone said, who the fuck needs to go to a bar right now? Human beings, some of us like to be social. <laughs> we just want to get out and go talk to people and get shit-faced with people. I got over that at 23, I think. Like, 23 or 24 was when my bar days ended. But, yeah, people are eager to get back into that stuff. Um, I'm lucky I get to stream. I'm lucky I get to, like, talk to friends online. That's been great for me. That's been helpful. Or oh, is that movie makeup? You look like a monster! It's so cool! You are stung by a wasp. Oh my gosh, you poor thing. I'm so sorry I called you a monster. Put some medication on that sit sting super quick. Tomorrow is the day Humphrey packs up to leave this island. I'm super sad about it, but I'm going to start rehearsing my goodbye smile. Oh, okay. Well... I don't think I'm going to be searching every tree like I've been. Um, instead, I'm just going to... I think I'm gonna stop here. You know, it's swimming. You have to find stuff. It's not the most exciting thing, but at least it's something. And, um, there's a wide variety of things to catch. So... Yeah, let's- let's see. Hopefully that cooking and farming stuff is true, because that seems like it's gonna add a little- little something spicy to the game, and, you know? Something... Getting it ever closer to a Harvest Moon type experience. Which it doesn't really need to be. I mean, Animal Crossing... 
I was always fine with the interaction with the villagers and collecting furniture, but extra things like crafting, you know, unless you're crafting 10 fishing bait, in which case, god damn, does that take forever, and please speed that up, Nintendo, please. But other than that, the crafting has been kind of fun. So stuff like cooking and farming will give people more incentive to come back and play more. Someone said we need more stuff to spend money in Nook Miles on. Honestly, Nook Miles would be my number one thing. I have six, uh, 60,000 or so, and I have no idea what to buy with them. I haven't seen your smiling face for some time. While Hoor Island is still here and not much has changed, take a look around you and you'll see. Mother of Pearl, what happened to your face? You've gone and got yourself stung by wasps, haven't you? Good grief, darling. What were you thinking? Well, at least you have a good timing. I just so happen to have medicine I can share with you. One must always be prepared. After all, getting stung by a wasp is such a buzzkill. Buzzkill, get it? Because they're wasps. Your star costume is fabulous, darling. I swear if you make whatever you wear... I swear you make whatever you wear look marvelous. You know what would match your attire perfectly? Some striped tights. What? What? I do hope you like my little present. I'm certain the look will suit you, Snappy. What? Uh... Weird. The fishing tourney takes place this Saturday, you know? Oh, God. I, I'm, I'm not gonna... No, sorry, wait, <laughs> won't be here this Saturday to stream that, or play it. Well, it seems I'm free next weekend, after all. Someone who shall remain nameless cancelled our plans. What do you do when you suddenly have free time on your hands, Vine? I, um... I usually retreat to the couch, to be honest. <laughs> No, you just give up and loaf around, but darling, you mustn't turn into a lazy bones. Maybe I'll stream? Then again, I suppose one does need time to recharge one's batteries and refresh one's mind. Perhaps unexpected free time is the universe's way of telling us to get in touch with our inner couch potato. I'm gonna give Whitney a great white shark. Is that a real, live, great white shark? Well, it's a bit unorthodox, but very thoughtful. I think you'll enjoy my- I think I'll enjoy my new pet. Well, I can't let you go away empty-handed now. Here, take this fan palm. Pet. Imagine that. Now, how much- How much chum does one have to buy per week to feed a great white shark? How much room does one have to make? How, how many permits and licenses? How much education does one need to have a great white shark as a pet? In other words, that you don't. That's just not gonna happen, but... Wow. All I got was this lousy plant. So basically, you gave Whitney a problem. Buying anyone a pet, I feel in general, is... Like, yeah, you're, you're basically giving them an investment in... You know, they have to, like, pay for the pet. There's an investment in, like, future sadness. There's a, a whole lot... You don't give a pet to someone unless they specifically want a pet. I say this as someone who has no idea what they're talking about, but I I think I might be on to something.
Someone said, I worked at a pet store. Please don't randomly buy pets for people. But my question is, does it happen? I should get that surfboard. It does. It really does. M way more than you'd think. On some level, I thought maybe it was such a rare occurrence that me even saying that out loud was just silly. Too much, especially with kittens. Ooh. People buy lots of rabbits during Easter and then abandon them. Fuck! God, that's- I don't want to go into that. That's dark. That's a shame. Why are people, like, that stupid, though? Like, why- like... Poor rabbits. I hope... I hope, um, they eventually find homes. That's all I can say about that. And then hopefully homes that don't include people watching my streams... ...for when I get loud. is reading a comic book. Oh, no, 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 it's just a muscle magazine. Way to get here, champ. Guess we might as well work out, huh? Not what you had in mind. Got any maxims on haircuts you feel strongly about, ZipZoom? Not really. Oh, yeah? Ah, I figured you'd have a reason for it, ZipZoom. I often style my hair so it cuts down on the drag when I swim. I want to be like a torpedo zipping past everyone. Scoot, what do you mean hair? Scoot, what do you mean muscles? Of course, I don't really like to dunk my head underwater, and I usually swim with a floaty device on. That's very cute, but... You're also wearing a swim cap. And you're a duck. The t-shirt I wear for my daily workout is like family. Do you know what makes me want to wear it every day? Do you, champ? It's breathable mesh? Huh? You know your sportswear. That's what most folks would say, but... Well, for me, breathability is just a secondary concern, ZipZoom. What I want in a shirt is a fabric that wicks my sweat in a way that makes my muscles look even bigger. I think I read that in a previous stream, but my memory is bad, so it's like I'm playing this game for the very first time. Alright, well, yeah, the update, there's some stuff. I want to get more Pascal stuff. Wait a minute, do you have to use scallops to make Pascal's recipes? No? Pearls? Oh, right, the pearls, okay, alright. Well, it's good to have another update. I'm wondering what the next one's gonna be, but... Swimming is nice. I might return to this before the next big update. If not, then we'll just continue the update train. You know, when there's a new one, I do it. Otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, it could just be an occasional revisit. So, I will be streaming later. So stop by if you want. And, yeah, it'll be more video games. Hylix 2. Fuck it, we'll do Hylix 2 tonight. Alright, goodbye everybody, thank you, and art! Including the rest of the art from last night, including more art of Mr. Frank. So, thank you, and stop by other streamers. Autohost will take you. I'm sure a lot of my friends and other streamers are...
doing some work right now, so you can check him out if you want. Just stay here. Autohost will take you there. Goodbye. See you soon.